From our point of view here on Earth, the diameter of the Moon takes up about half a degree in the sky. This means that if you were to place them side by side, it would take 720 moons to complete a full circle. I submit that this was known about thousands of years ago and incorporated in the design and construction of the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt. This remarkable monument dates from more than 4,000 years ago, and I'm going to outline just a few of the reasons I think the designers and builders of it were more scientifically advanced than they are generally given credit for. For instance, they were not supposed to have known about pi, or the exact size of the Sun, Earth and Moon, nor were they supposed to know about the precession of the equinoxes. To be clear, there is a lot of mutually contradictory nonsense, especially here on the internet, concerning the Great Pyramid, aliens and the supernatural. I am only concerned with what is demonstrable, which will naturally leave many questions unanswered. Nevertheless, I think it is a fascinating area of study. Here we go. As I mentioned at the start, the size and distance that the Moon is from us means that placed side by side it would take 720 moons to fill a giant ring with us at the centre. The same thing applies to the Sun, which also happens to occupy half a degree of angular vision when viewed from the Earth. That is why we get such perfect solar eclipses. The diameter of the Sun is 400 times larger than the Moon. It is also 400 times further away. So what does the number 720 have to do with the Great Pyramid? Whoever designed and built it used units of measurement we call the Egyptian Royal Cubit, which is about 20 inches or 52 centimeters. Before the casing stones were removed, the original height was 280 cubits and each base length was 440 cubits. When talking about this pyramid, those are the two most significant measurements. So what happens if we add them together? We get 720. But there's more. Think of 720 miles as a large unit of measurement. Exactly 11 of these units happen to fit into the diameter of the Earth, which is 7920 miles and three of the same units fit exactly into the diameter of the Moon, 2160 miles. It's almost like the people who left us this monument were enticing people of the future to play around with numbers. While we're at it, how many times does this 720 mile unit go into the diameter of the Sun? 1200. What are the odds that this 720 mile unit fits exactly into the diameters of the Sun, the Earth and the Moon by coincidence? So what other information might be encoded in the dimensions of the Great Pyramid? The height of the pyramid, as I mentioned before, was originally 280 cubits, which is a multiple of 14. Why 14? Remember 3 and 11? Well, added, they make 14. Here's an interesting thing we can do geometrically. If we draw a diagram of the side profile of the pyramid and divide the height into 14 units, the base length is 22 units. So we can draw two circles from the tip and halfway along the base length so one has a radius of 11 units and the other has a radius of 3 and both circumferences pass through a point 3 units down from the tip and the large one also passes through both ends of the base length. The dimensions of the pyramid lead us to a scale model of the Earth and Moon. But nobody is supposed to have known about that for at least another 2,000 years. Also, nobody is supposed to have known about Pi until the time of the Greeks. Yet, if we imagine the pyramid representing a sphere of radius 280 units, and a circumference of 4 times 440 units, which is 1760, then we can double the radius to give us a diameter of 560. And if we divide 1760 by 560, it's the same as 22 over 7, which is 3.142, 
which is a close approximation of pi. To me, it seems a remarkable coincidence that the pyramid represents pi and that the squaring of the circle also happens to geometrically fit nicely with the ratios of the diameters of the Earth and Moon. Here are some more coincidences which connect the pyramid with the modern mile. Firstly, a mile consists of 1,760 yards, which is exactly the same number of cubits as in the perimeter of the pyramid. Secondly, the height of the pyramid multiplied by 11 is 1 mile, and one base length multiplied by 7 is also 1 mile. Thirdly, many of the numbers are precessionally significant. The diameter of the moon in miles is the same as the number of years it takes for the equinoxes to precess through one zodiacal constellation. Fourthly, the number of seconds in 10 days is the same as the number of miles in the diameter of the sun, 864,000. What's so special about 10 days? I don't know, other than it's a coincidentally round number. I think it's pretty obvious that when people claim that nobody knew pi, the sizes of the Sun, Earth and Moon, the modern mile and the duration of the cycle of the precession of the equinoxes 4,000 plus years ago, that they are simply wrong. With regard to the precession of the equinoxes, there is another amazing coincidence, and that is the height and perimeter of the pyramid multiplied by 43,200 is the Earth's polar radius and equatorial circumference, respectively. Now, 432 and multiples thereof are precessionally significant. 4,320 is the number of years it takes for the Earth's polar axis to precess through two zodiacal constellations, or one-sixth of the full precessional cycle, as well as being twice the Moon's diameter in miles. Also, 43,200 is the number of seconds in half a day or 12 hours. Again, I have to wonder how much of a coincidence it is that we find these numbers in a monument which is more than 4,000 years old. At what point do a series of coincidences cease to be coincidental and at what point do we tentatively conclude that certain astronomical information was known by people thousands of years earlier than is generally accepted by academia.